This video is a brief introduction to improving the reproducibility of our R code. And the basic idea behind reproducibility is that we want to be able to rerun our full analysis with a single click or command. The first step in this process is making sure that our code will run anytime and anywhere. And that includes things like running the next day. So who's gotten code to work at some point and you're excited and you're like, this is a great way to end the day. And you go celebrate and you come back the next morning and turn on your computer and something doesn't run. I've certainly been there. Uh, and that's uh, what some of the things we're going to learn today will help avoid. They'll also help avoid having code running on one computer and then you move to another computer and it doesn't work, or sending code to your collaborators and having it not work for them, and so on. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure that only what's going on in the code right now is determining what's happening. We need to make sure that things we did at some point in the past and then changed don't matter. And as we learned in a lesson a couple of weeks ago, uh, computers store the results of each command that we run in sequence. So the first line runs and the results are stored and then the second line run and the results are stored and so on. But since the results of those commands are being stored, it's possible that if we change something, it looks like the code still works, but it only works because of something we did earlier and then changed. So let's look at an example of this. First, we're going to use some of our good reproducibility practice that we learned about in the last video by starting a new project. So I'm working in our studio on my own computer again to demonstrate this. I'm going to click on File and then New Project. I'm going to select New Directory and then New Project because I'm starting something new. I'm going to navigate to my home directory for storing this. We can see home here is the tilde, and then I'm going to give uh, my project directory uh, a new name. I'll call it reproducibility, since that's what this lesson is about, and click create project. And remember, this is going to make it possible for the code to know where any data we use is in a way that will work across computers. Now, I need some data, so I'm going to open my browser, and go to our course website, and it looks like I'm already on the list of data sets, but if we go to the home page, remember that list of data sets is here, and then I'm going to download our surveys data. Now, as we learned about in paths, we need that to be in that directory I just created, in the project directory. And so I'm going to actually download it a different way. I'm going to right click on it instead of just left clicking on it. And that will bring up save link as, which will then let me click and tell the browser where I want to put that data file. And so now I can go to my home directory, go into the reproducibility directory, and click Save. And then I'm going to go back to our studio. And now we can see that the data file I just downloaded, that surveys data file, if I get out of the way, uh, is down here uh, in our files directory. And we also see that .rproj file, which is just what makes this a project. OK. Great, so let's do some analysis and we'll make sure it keeps running. First, we'll load this data. I'll call it data underscore mammals. Then our assignment operator. 
and then read.csv quotes and then the file that we're loading. So surveys.csv. And then I'll run that line. I can see the data has been loaded. Everything's going great. And then let's calculate the mean mass of all the small mammals at the site. So we'll call this average underscore mass. And then our assignment operator. And then we'll use the mean function. And the mean function works on vectors. So we need to pull the weight column out as a vector. So we'll say data underscore mammals dollar sign weight na dot rm is equal to true. And we'll get a new value over here, which is our average mass of all the small mammals. So we've done this part of our analysis, and then we decide that we also want the species data. So I'm going to go back to our list of data sets. I'm going to right click on the species table, click Save As. It's automatically going to bring me back to the directory I just saved in, so I'll click on Save. We can then go back to RStudio, and we've got our species table. Great. And now we're going to uh, load this up. We'll call this data underscore species. And we'll add our assignment operator and read dot CSV quotes species dot CSV. So this all looks good. Uh, and we can run this and we'll load the species data. Uh, but Saying this is data on mammals now is kind of confusing. Uh, so let's go ahead and change this to data surveys, since we've got the surveys table and the average mass. Uh, and then we can highlight everything and run it, and everything looks great. So we're happy, and we can call it a day. Our analysis is done. But do you think this code is going to rerun properly if I restart our studio? Well, let's find out. Let's save this as myanalysis.r. I'm going to close our studio. Don't save our data. Bring our studio back. And now let's run our code. And it didn't work. Uh, I got an error now. And so this is exactly this case where we thought everything was working, and it's not working anymore. Why? Well, let's read through the code. First, we create data underscore surveys. Then we calculate the mean of something called data underscore mammals at weight. But we don't have a data underscore mammals data frame because we renamed it up here. And the only reason it existed before was because we'd previously run code that created this data frame and it was still in memory when we ran it last time. And this kind of renaming error is a very common source of code bugs in code. And we would fix it uh, by renaming this to surveys. But how do we stop these kinds of mistakes from happening? How do we make sure that our code is running after we've changed it? There are two approaches you can do to address this. We've talked about one of them, which is that we could click this broom icon over here and click yes, and it will clear out everything in the environment. And so that would have saved us in this case. It doesn't unload packages. And so if we'd forgotten to load a library, or we'd loaded it and then deleted it, it wouldn't catch that error. And so we can fix that 
And so we can actually restart R entirely. And I restarted our studio, but we don't have to go that far. We can just click on Session up here and click Restart R. And this will generally make sure that things will work just like if you restarted your computer, as long as it doesn't secretly reload things for you. And uh, I'll show you how to avoid that in just a minute. The other thing we can do is make sure that we're running the whole file at once, often by running source with echo, like we talked about before, or by at least uh, hitting uh, Control Shift S, which will run the whole file for us, just like running source. And this makes sure that the code runs all the way through as a cohesive unit, not just that parts of it run uh, in a way that might be influenced by order. All right, a couple other things we want to do for now. We want to click on Tools and go to Global Options. And if we scroll down just a little bit, we'll see this Workspace section. Next to it, it says Restore.R data into the workspace at startup. What this does is R will often store the state of your workspace into a file called R data. And in fact, below this, it says, Do you want to save workspace to R data on exit? And it currently says ask. And so that's why when I closed our studio before, it said, do you want to save this? And it was asking me if I wanted to save the state of the working environment. And I said no. We want to make two changes here. First, in general, we want to change save workspace to our data on exit to never. The only situation in which we really want to be saving the state of our workspace is if there's a huge amount of computational work that's been done and we don't want to have to rerun it. Uh, and so in general, we want this turned off because it can make it very difficult to ensure that our code is running reproducibly. And we also want to unclick restore our data into workspace at startup. That way, if we accidentally store some R data, it won't get loaded. And then we can uh, hit enter or close this, and those settings will now apply to all of our RStudio projects unless we change something specific to the project. If you really need to be able to save our data for a specific project, then in that project, you can go to Tools and click on Project Options and set uh, both the restoring our data and the saving workspace to our data uh, options specifically for this project. And then they'll work for that project where maybe you're doing a huge amount of data analysis, but they won't make all of your other projects less reproducible. So that's the sort of basic first starting point uh, settings and approaches for writing reproducible R code in our studio. We want to make sure that the code runs as it's written by either using the broom to clear out the global environment or using session and restart R to restart the R session and then rerun all of our code at once uh, using source or source with echo. And then we want to set our studio so that it doesn't secretly save our workspace to our data and cause things to work differently uh, than the code itself is working, uh, and also uh, have it not reload that data on startup.